Hi guys, this is Stu with Main Street Mower. Today we're going over steel and aftermarket string trimmer line heads. Some of them are bump heads, some of them are auto feeding, some of them are fixed where you cut a particular section. They all have different ways of being refilled. And this is something that a lot of times causes people a lot of frustration. And hopefully this video will help take a lot of that frustration away. To start, and we'll just talk about this briefly, the Steel 25.2. This is the head that comes standard on a steel trimmer, at least in the US. I'm, I'm not sure about other markets. And this is a head that many commercial landscapers are very well acquainted with. We also have a video of how to restring this head. It's one of our oldest videos, and we have a link to it in the top right hand corner. So I won't open this up and go over that again because you can just switch over to that video if you want to see how to refill this. But one thing I can say about this head is that it holds 33 feet of line and this is the bump head that Steel has used since I was a child and it's very reliable. I always tell our customers that I've used this head my entire life and I've never had it not feed line properly. There are a couple rules like one is that line gets old and brittle so any line that's sitting in your shed and you've had it for years if you put it in any bump head, it's going to break and it's going to make you mad. So just simply going out and buying fresh line is going to solve your problems there. And then the other big thing is you have to bump the head before it gets too short. You know, this might be okay, but if it got any shorter than this, when you bump it, there's not enough gravity to grab that line and pull more line out, centripetal force. That's the last thing I'll say about that head. It holds a lot of line, it's easy to work with, it's reliable. And, you know, a lot of people don't even realize this, but on your string trimmer gear head, there's a little hole right there. And there's a tool specifically designed for this, but really anything kind of small fits in there. will lock this head from spinning right there. And then this head is left-hand thread. You spin it to the right to make it come off. So that's opposite what normal, uh, what you're used to. So that's how that head comes off. And that's how this head would go on. So that's how easy it is to interchange heads. So you see I'm spinning it lefty loosey. Holding the screwdriver in here good. And you just, you just hand tight is all that it needs to be because when you hit the gas, you're tightening this head every, every time you hit the gas. So you know, just barely tight is tight enough. Next, you know, sometimes people, when they buy a new string trimmer, they want something like this. It's a fixed line where you have pre-cut sections of line. I'm gonna open this up. And I always encourage people, don't buy this right away because you're probably frustrated with your Ryobi or Troy built, some other piece of junk head that if you try this first, you're gonna be very happy with the 25.2 and you probably won't have to go here. A lot of times I'll even tell people, if you don't like this head, I'll give you this head, just to encourage them to try this in the first place. I've never had to give anyone this head. No one ever takes me up on that offer. But if it is just really frustrating to you, and you may just prefer this, that head, and then this head comes with these, but this isn't gonna last you very long. These are, let's see, should be eight inches. And these are seven and a quarter inches. And the way this head works is you just stick these in the eyelet and they're barbed. So once you stick something in there, they don't come back out. Now the disadvantage of something like this is that when this line gets low, you kind of just have to deal with it until you put your motor down in the dirt, flip it over, and how you change it out is you grab the inside here and you pull the leftover piece of line out, throw that away, and you stick a new piece of line in there. The other disadvantage was, would be that most mower shops carry all the parts for this head, 
in abundance, so you can always walk in the door and get everything you need for this. Whereas this is a little more of a specialty fringe head, so you probably have to order these parts and wait on them. This head holds three sizes of line. It holds 0 .08, 0 .095, and 0 .105. That's uh, decimals of an inch. So this is roughly the 105 line, and it's bigger than your normal line, but it's not that big. Steel does carry a 130. You see that number right there, 0.130 of an inch. And then they also carry 155. This is quite big. This is almost the thickness of a pencil. It's a little smaller. And then there's aftermarket lines, same deal. You see how thick this stuff is? People want to run these lines, these bigger lines. If guys doing roadside work want to run them. If you have a bigger trimmer, like if you have an FS131 or an FS240, that's really what you need to run these bigger lines. You need more horsepower. Uh, and this head will not fit these lines. This little hole will not accommodate. We're, we'll try. We'll try the 130 just to prove us, prove ourselves. Hmm? Okay, this head does fit the 130. Say you wanted to buy a spool like this and you wanted to cut some pre-cut sections off. You could kind of use an old piece like this as your yardstick. You know, this one was seven and a quarter. And then you could just, just clip or a bucket full of these. And then, see how this one's kind of serrated? You can buy these in a pre-cut package, or you can buy a spool of whatever line you like and cut your own. So even though the, the manual, the product manual for this head says that the largest line that it accommodates is 0.105, that would be incorrect. This is a point. 130 and it seems to fit just fine works good so you could go up to that but I would warn you that this line's a lot heavier and it puts a lot more load on your string trimmer and it wouldn't be recommended unless you had a strong enough unit the next newest and most popular head that's on the market is steels 26.2 it's called auto cut 26.2 and it looks and acts a lot like the speed feed head. Echo and Shindawa have been running a head called the speed feed head for many, many years, over 10 years. And um, this is from an aftermarket company called Rotary. And this is a universal kit that has some hardware in there to make it fit literally every brand of trimmer. And it's really just two line capacity sizes. If you have a smaller horsepower unit, you need to go with the smaller head because it's going to take more power to run this bigger head. If you have a bigger commercial unit, then you can run this larger speed feed head. So I'm not going to open both of them because they both work the exact same way, so it'd be a little redundant. I'll just open the big one. One thing that I wanted to clear up too while we're in here is the speed feed head does not hold a lot of line. That's kind of its biggest problem is that it's a big bulky head but not that much line fits in here. So I read the instructions on both the little one and the big one and they both said 10 feet is the capacity of these heads. Now my guess is that 10 feet is all they put in here at the factory to save money. So I'm gonna open it up, show you what's inside and also fill it and then we're gonna measure the line so you know exactly how much you can fit in here. Okay, so this mounts on your trimmer and when all the line is gone and the last bits of it fling out, you'll locate an arrow here and here and you'll twist it clockwise. See, it actually won't go the other way, so it'll only go the one way. And when that is lined up with your eyelet and no lines in here, you'll be able to look through and see light. You'll be able to see right through this head. So then you take a 10 foot, is what the instruction says, piece of line, and you kind of get it straight and you poke it in and it'll come out the other side. And then you can put an even amount of line on either side. In this case, they're saying five feet on either side. And then you just twist and it will pull the line in without having to open it up. Now, sometimes your line gets lost in here and you do have to open it up. So it is good to know what's going on in here. So you got to unscrew it off of your trimmer and then you're holding this. And I like to kind of lay it out in order because if you put it back together backwards, then it won't twist in that clockwise fashion and it won't work properly. So 
you'll end up just having to open it back up and retwist it back together again. So this head's brand new and it's probably a little more than I can muster with my thumb. Well, no, I can. Sometimes I can't and I'll use a flat head to pry that open. So I leave that this way and then here is the spool that holds the line. Pull all the line out of here. So this is definitely a 10 foot piece of line. But it looks like it could fit a little more than that. The reason I pull this out is because if you want this to fit on a steel, what you need is the green adapter. And so you have to open this head, get your green adapter, get to this middle. You see this gold piece here? This is what fits on an Echo or Shindawa. And it's in there pretty tight. Knock it out. Okay, now that that is seated down in the base of the head, return this piece, then here, then flip this back on, and then this goes on, it's easy, and then this will spin right on your steel trimmer just like your 25.2, and you can have a speed feed head, which a lot of people like. So let's see how much line we can put on here. I'm just gonna pull off a huge amount. Let's say like 30 feet. It's three times as much as they say it can fit. And then I will put it in the hole, pull it out even on both sides and then we'll twist until it won't twist anymore. And then we'll clip the ends and we'll open it up again. We'll measure what's inside and we'll officially have the answer. So there's one arm length. I got like a six and a half foot arm span. There's two, there's three, four, and there's five. Okay. Okay, so, you know, on some of the heads, when the head is, the gear head itself is on here, it covers up these little arrows. I mean, it covers up most of them. So you're just looking for that little point that's sticking out. So you'll spin it until your arrows line up with your eyelets. It's hard to see, but I'm staring at the camera right through this head. You kind of get it straight because if you put it in there crooked, it like goes off into no man's land and doesn't come out the other side. So you want to get it straight as you can, kind of watch it as it goes through, and it'll come out on the other side. Okay, these two ends are even. Perfect. All right, this is a ton of line. We'll see how much it holds. So. Didn't have to open this head, just twist. And when it gets tight, that's pretty much your sign that that's the end of the line. But it is starting to snug up. Man, we almost got all of that. Okay, I think that's about it. So, I was correct. Even though they shipped it with 10 feet of line, they were just being cheap. It can hold a lot more line than that. Yeah, it's quite full. It might not be recommended to go this full just because you could have it snag or bind rat's nest. This is probably a 25 foot tape measure. We're at night, we're at 20 feet, 22, 23. There's 25. Wow, almost 29 feet. I'd say 25 is a good safe number if you want to fill this up. Ah, that makes me want to open the little head and just come up with a definitive answer on that. We'll do it in fast forward just so that you can have an answer if you're curious. We'll use the same line. Just now you get to see this process again. What we're doing is feeding that same 29 feet we put in the high capacity head. That head's called the 475. We're putting in the 375 
and we're going to see how much this smaller head will hold. Yeah, that's sig significantly less, at least 10 or 12 feet less. Should put us at 19 to 15 feet of line inside of this head. Fifteen, almost sixteen feet go in the lower capacity head. About half as much. And that is the speed feed head. Very nice, very reliable. A lot of people like them. And they can be converted to fit on a steel trimmer. I briefly mentioned this before going on to talk about speed feed heads. And steel brought this out, I believe, in response to the popularity of the speed feed. This is their version of speed feed. So it works the same way. You twist, the line goes in, you don't have to open the head. It does come apart a lot easier. But there are some differences here. One steel always gives you a fully loaded head when you buy a new head. So we'll be able to measure one of these lines and double it to tell you how much their head will hold. I wasn't sure of this, but now I am. <coughs> So I thought with the steel head that you actually had to insert individual pieces into each side, but it looks as though you can put a line in and it will pass all the way through and out the other side, just like a speed feed head. But you notice there's, there's no line all the way through, so the steel runs the line around this outside and then pokes it out through the other side. It's because it can't go through this spring mechanism in the middle, just different engineering. All right, so the, the large speed feed was 29, I, I would really safely say 25, because we beyond maxed it out. And then the smaller one measured 16, which that's an okay measure. Maybe 15 would be safer, so you didn't have problems. So this is 21 feet of line, somewhere in between the two. It's a good amount. You know, one thing about steel is you can always trust their engineering and their support and all, all the good stuff that we always talk about. So if you notice on the head here, it's pretty intuitive. There's this line, and then there's an arrow here. So I'm pretty sure we line that up. Now, you remember it's having to go out and around on that spool and poke back through, so you're gonna have a little resistance. And looky there. All right, same idea. You grab here, and you spin it. You know, I was a little critical that this head doesn't have quite the same grip that that speed feed ha has when it comes to refilling it. It does have these spots for your fingertips. It's kind of rough on your fingertips, to be honest, but you can just grab it like this. It works just fine. I will quit critiquing steel on that little piece. I kind of like this head. Price-wise, this head's a little less money than the speed feed heads, actually, too. And it's a steel. So steel is shipping the FS56 RCE, which is a residential straight shaft string trimmer, with this head on it standard uh, from the factory, which is good. I think people are going to like this head a lot. And uh, it's easy to understand. You see the line right there across. It's easy to open. When you put the line in, it is directed around perfectly. Sometimes with the speed feed head, you got to work on getting it straight to poke it through. This one is like, you just plug it in. It's pretty dummy proof. I like it. All right, just a couple more. This is yet another fixed cut head. The name of this head is 31.2, and this will fit 155, which is really the biggest dimension trimmer line that's on the market. So this head doesn't have a threaded insert that's made into the head. After you take the bump head off, you would put this on, and then you would fit this geared washer on like that, and then you would fit this left-hand thread nylock flange nut on, and you would use your pin tool to lock the gear head, and then you would use your steel scrunch to tighten that nut up. I would really only recommend this to somebody who has an FS240 or maybe an FS131R who's doing roadside and wants to run the thickest line they possibly can run. And again, just because this line is so heavy, that it's going to overload and overheat any other motor. Look at what a pain in the butt this is. This would be much easier to do with a, a skinny line, but if you bought this, it's probably because you want to put the biggest stuff you can get in it. 
I'm going to pull off just plenty enough so we have enough to work with. And then we'll take a measure so if you're doing this, you'll know how much to cut in, in, from the get-go. So you go through the outlet hole. Then you snake it around this turn here, back in to the center. If you guys can get a good look at that. It's gone into that hole, and then it's gone around the bend and then back into the center. And then we're going to do that same thing on this side and then out the matching exit hole right here. You know, a lot of people take their guard off of their string trimmer, and that is a bad idea because it allows you to run more than the prescribed seven inches of line. If you take your guard off and run this thicker line, you're really going to run into problems because you're going to be heating that motor up significantly. All right, so take a look inside. You see that S-shape figure eight? Can you see it good? The back view? Okay. So let's cut it to what is the recommended length. We'll give it seven and a half inches. Ah, seven. Just seven. So that's how it will look on your trimmer. And then let's take it out of here. You know, this stuff's thick. It's hard to maneuver. So one thing that I have heard is guys doing roadside who run this kind of a situation here, they'll say that they can put this piece of line in this head and trim all day long without replacing line at all, which that is pretty cool. Save you a lot of walks back to the truck, a lot of labor. You just got to buy the right trimmer in the first place. Big one. Like I would not put this on an FS91, not even a 111. That's a bigger one. All right. Yeah, so when this is worn down to a nub, you're going to have to fish this middle section out and have a new pre-cut line in your pocket. And the length of this thing is, comes to 22 and a half inches. That's a good rough number for you. You know, you buy a big spool like this or like this, and you start pulling off 22, 22 and a half inches at a time and snipping it so you have some pre-cut sections ready to go into this head. Now there's one final head that we're gonna talk about today. There are more head options in this, but these are the practical ones. These are the popular ones. This is called the Supercut 20.2. I personally run this head at home. A few of my salesmen run this head at home. The reason is because one day a few German engineers from steel came into our showroom. They were touring in America. As I was talking to them, we were looking at string trimmers on the wall, and they said in their German accent, why do these not have supercuts on them? And I kind of looked at him like, what do you mean? We, this is how we get them from the factory with this head, the 25.2. And he said, oh, I did not know that. In Germany, they ship them with this head. And I said, well, this head's better. It's, it's easier to rewind and it lasts a long time. And he says, this one's easier to rewind. And I said, oh, okay. And then he said, and this one lasts a lot longer because you don't bump it on the ground. This head automatically feeds line. It's engineered in such a way that when the line gets shorter without doing anything at all, the operator does not have to do anything. The line just extends back out to the prescribed length. And because it's micro, it's changing, it's making micro adjustments in the length of the line, it's not over advancing line that's being clipped off by the line limiter. And I would suspect that a lot of your line is lost because you over advance and you snip it off by the line limiter. So because of that, this, this head actually lasts longer. I'll have to say, it has been my experience. I love this head at home. At home, I have a patch of about 500 square feet of ferns, and I string trim them down a few times a year. And I can go into this bed of knee-high ferns with this head and just straight trim without even thinking about bumping the entire time, you know, for a good 10, 15 minute string trim session. So same idea, you have a button there, you press there, this comes out. You can see it's a bit fancy in here. It's got some kind of, I'm gonna mess this word up, a centrifugal system that when this line is shorter and it's not pulling as hard, it releases more line 
till it gets out to that seven inch mark. And then as the line wears and it gets shorter and it's not pulling as hard, it sends more line out. Refilling it is quite simple. He was correct about that. It's the same idea as all the others. Two lines spun on in the same direction, the same as a 25.2. Then when you get to the end, you clip your line in here like this. You know, there are two separate lines. There's a top section and a bottom section. And then when you go to drop it back in here, any way you put it in will work just fine. The only other thing to look out for are these two little coat hangers, these little ears here, because getting it set to work properly involves putting it around the outside of each ear. So it's around that way. And then you just clip this back on, and it clips on really nice. It's got good action. And that's the Supercut. Thank you all for joining me on this little tour down string trimmer line heads. There's a lot of options from bumped to speed feed style bump. Oh, this does bump, by the way to fix cut line heads where you actually have a pre-cut piece that you weave through right down to the super cut that automatically feeds line out. Thank you all for watching. That is my trimmer line video. A lot of questions you may have, please put them down in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe, watch our other videos. Let us know what you guys want to see. We'll make it. Thanks for watching.